then, then we're going to get started. So if you pray with me. Dear Father in heaven, thank you so much for a fun day today. Thank you so much that the 7th and 8th graders are going to use their gifts to put on a show to entertain us. Thank you for all these audience members that are watching and um, let us be entertained and know that we can clap and laugh. And we just thank you that we were able to use our church. We were thankful for our volunteers that helped us. And most of all, we're thankful for your son, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, sit back, relax, and enjoy the fearsome pirate Frank. Audiences 
we're a very patient friend island. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow and uh, maybe. Ooh! I paid good money for this. You stink. You call yourself an actor? Oh, I want a refund. <laughs> Obviously, Frank wasn't gonna make it as a great Shakespearean actor. He was in love though, because just about the time he was thinking of chucking the whole thing and becoming Jamie Sweet. He was taken on by an agent who knew just what kind of part fit Frank to a team. His name was Mr. Smee. Hmm. I wonder where I'll play where I got that name. I tell you, Frank, this is the part for you. Really? Sure, there are no stuff show directors or temperamental actresses to deal with here. All you have to do is look fierce and daring with your sword and eye patch, and you got a name. I can look fierce and daring. Oh, of course you can. And best of all, there are no complicated lines for him. When you can't think of what to say, just say, aw. Aw? A little deeper. Aw. Let it come from your throat. Aw. And now with gusto. Aw. By George, I think you got it. Aw. And so Frank won the lead in the new pirate show that was taking the town by storm. And he became the fearsome pirate. Then again, 
Maybe not. To get on with our story, one night, Frank and his band of pirates were in the midst of their show when they had some unexpected visitors. It was a... Nice touch, that music, don't you think? It was Act 2, and Frank had just met up with his arch nemesis, the Pirate Moon. Paired, of course, by that one time she experienced sensation and head gawking extraordinaire, Esmeralda Effington. Who gave you leave to come ashore on the island of the Pirate Queen? I need no man to give me leave. I be the fearsome Pirate Frank. I ask leave of no man. The fearsome Pirate Frank? Who be the fearsome Pirate Frank? Who? Who said that? It came from the audience. Just ignore it, Frank. You may ask me with no man in Pirate, but if you value your life, you better ask me with me, the Pirate Queen. Shimmer me timbers, the ones who imagine she be a queen. Ali, Ali. Oh. Oh, right, thank you. Ye may be a queen, ye beauty, but I be a king, the fearsome pirate friend, king of all pirates. Now you're trying to patience, laddie. Come on, you ladies. Maybe time to set the record straight.
other pirate ship when they signed up for this game. Let alone a pirate ship run by a bunch of women. The ship sailed at dawn, and the cast of the fearsome pirate prank show was immediately put to work, swabbing the deck, pumping the bilges, and doing whatever other lowly thing there is to do on a pirate ship. Esmeralda was kept in a small cabin below decks, which, if you ask me, was a pretty good idea. Look at them, lounging around up there while we do all the work. This is so embarrassing. They kidnapped a bunch of women. Women pirates were supposed to wear cute skirts and net stockings. Yeah, and those little cute shirts with the laces. Shut your traps down there and keep swabbing those stacks. I, sir, ma'am, somehow I can't see her in a cute skirt and stockings. This out. This out is completely outrageous. I try to keep be keeping her in her cabin, Captain, but but she'd be running out sooner and turn my back. I refuse to be kept in that filthy place. Are you telling me, Lassie, that you're not happy for your accommodations? Accommodations? You could hardly call that smelly, rat-infested sinkhole accommodations. There's no place to take a bath. I haven't even been able to wash my hair. And you can't have me without even allowing me to bring my makeup case. Aw, me. she ain't got a makeup case. We better keep throwing her in a row and send her home. You can talk the truth, mate. If she cleans it up, we're gonna have to stuff her.
See to it, Bones. We may have some treasure to be collecting. Aye, aye, Captain. It be a ship, all right, Captain. It be, it be the zombie ship, the Black Mark. The Black Mark? The, the Black, Black Mark. Mark. Yeah. Either Frank is really taking to the pirate web, 
or he has something up his sleeve, which I highly doubt. I don't believe he's clever like that. Nothing out there, Miss Bones. This is a very nice spike, Miss Bones. Much better than the one I used to play. Of course it is. Got it from me, great, 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 before he danced with little Jack Ketch. Jack Ketch? He was a pirate too? <laughs> Jack Ketch a pirate? Blimey, that'd be a good one. Jack Ketch be the hangman, the young squad. And the pirate be dancing with him before their life be through. Aye, that would be fun in a bunk in Davy Jones' locker. Oh. Well, I guess there's a lot I don't know about pirates. My acting coach always told me to research my parts, but I just never had the time. It always took me such a very long time to learn my lines. Turn a bit to poor old Tilly. We'd be willing to catch more of that southeasterly wind. I made this, made this fair wind to take us further away from that blast of zombie ship. What is that zombie ship, anyways? It's not full of real zombies, is it? Not full of real zombies? Where have you been all your life, Lance? It'd be the black mark, the bane of every Jack who sails the sea. Especially if you're the bane of our own Captain Frank. They've been following her ever since she'd done the deed it has. Done the deed? What does that mean? Well, that'd be for Betty Bones to tell you, lad. She, she was here from the very start. I just come in for the finale. What do you say, Bones? You be one to tell the lad the tale? Begad, yeah, why not, Tilly? It'd be a long story, but we'd be having a long night to be telling it. Sit yourself down, laddie, and get yourself ready to hear about some black and evil doings. I was just a young swab at the time, and best friend to Captain Frank. Her father was the captain of the Beetaloo, a fine, fast sloop bound for the Barbary Coast. In order to map this party play to the fullest, the player has decided to insert a flashback here. It provides the opportunity for more swashbuckling, more pirate and more pirates, which, of course, is what every pirate wants. Imagine yourself, therefore, cast back in time to the days of Betty Bones' tale, to the days of the Beetaloo. Captain Frank's father died on the Beetaloo, and old Ben Davies took over as captain. He was the meanest old sea dog that ever walked the deck of a sailing ship. Toughest, 
meanest woman pirates had ever walked the deck of a sailing ship. Tilly Tar. so disturbed by that black book shit. Look at you consorting with pirates. This thing is nonsense. Oh, Esmeralda. <laughs> Mind yourself, mate. She's armed with a boxing pin. Esmeralda, I just... Don't talk to me, you traitor. Now listen. Listen yourself. I have just had it with you women pirates. You're disgraced to all womanhood, but you haven't even learned how to use a proper conditioner on your hair. Man the decks! Man the decks! Would be a Tilly be the black mark in our sights? It'd be this bunch gone crazy with a bopping pin. Is that all? Get bigger, grab the last. Tilly and Betty seem to be 
a bit under the weather. Aye, aye, Captain. Triple Gert, she's a pair with that thing. Listen, Missy, we just be... Oh, God. Now, Evie Lynch, if you would just lay down your way. He heard Hillary Huck. Lay down your Don't come near me. I have now not had a bath for over a week. My hair is so filthy, I can feel the light scurrying around in it. I do not have one nail left in my hand that is now broken and defiled. I have been pushed past endurance on this ghastly ship and shall take it no more. Do you hear me? No more! Why The wench gone crazy. We need this armor, mate. Soak around her. Let's work together now, me mate. Don't you worry, Captain. We be taking your down, Captain. Get away from me. I'm warning you. I'm warning you all. I'm, I'm warning you. What is going on? What's the matter with all of you? What's the matter with him? As Marona asked. What has them standing there, enthralled, unable to function in a priority fashion? It's because of the sirens, my lady. The song of the sirens. They've been the scores of sailors since the beginning of time, and they're often depicted as beautiful mermaids. So of course we had to have them in this club. Mermaids, you know, are as popular as pirates. They're in. They said that. What are you doing? You're acting crazy. Not crazy, sweetie. Mesmerized. We've mesmerized them with our song. It happens every time. There isn't a sailor alive, male or female, who can resist us when we sing. It's starting to get a bit tedious, if you want to know the truth. Is that lipstick in a mirror you've got there? Of course. They come green. What do you think? I used to wear coral frost, but it didn't do anything for my complexion. You've got blush, and, and you've got a comb. A wonderful, wonderful comb! Are you all right, hon? What are you crying about? I'm sorry, it's just been so long since I've seen a comb and lipstick. Those poor pirates kidnapped me without my makeup case, and... Hold up, they kidnapped you without your makeup case? How dare they? Kidnapping is one thing, but depriving a woman of her foundation and her is inexcusable. Despicable. I know, and without any moisturizer, my and my skin has become blotchy, and my hair is a rat's nest. <laughs> Poor thing. We have to help her, don't you see? Of course, we women have to stick together. Come here, honey. We have something to say. We have seen many pirates in our day. Pirates who have sunken ships, pillaged villages, kidnapped their victims, or made them walk the plank. But we've never seen pirates guilty of such an atrocious act as this. We have never seen pirates who have deprived a woman of her, her makeup. makeup. We shall therefore release these pirates and their attachment to us and teach them how important makeup can be for a woman. They're women after all, though you never know what to look at them. They must be made aware of the responsibility that all women have to bear. They must be taught to face the world strong and brave. They must learn the merits of choosing the right shampoo and conditioner, of using moisturizer and a good foundation. There is so much for them to learn. And you shall be their teacher. Me? You want me to turn these woeful wretches into presentable women armed with mascara, lip gloss, and a subtle blush? Of course. What better woman than a poor, poor woman who has been victimized by these ignorant pirates? who don't know anything to protect their faces from the damaging effects of the sun and the wind, you shall cast a spell around them to make them play in your hands. They will beg you to bestow upon them the knowledge of Avon and Max Factor. But before we do that, we will give you a makeover. A makeover? Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. You can't be 
taking ho-ho breaks in the middle of the show. And you shouldn't be, and you shouldn't be expecting us to say yo ho ho, yo ho ho all the time. You can't be always saying yo ho ho without having a ho ho as my thinking. Well, maybe you shouldn't be thinking. That's not a very nice thing to say. Look what you did. You hurt his feeling. Just because you're a big deal inheritor doesn't mean you have to be rude. That's right. You want an apology, Mrs. Big Deal narrator? All right, all right. I'm sorry. Now get off the stage. We have to wait. That didn't sound very nice sincere. Yo ho ho, yo ho ho. We be doing a party show. This is what happens when you hire non-equity actors. Anyways, the signers were true to their word. They gave his Moreau the makeover and cast a spell on the pirates to make them crave a good shampoo and moisturizer. Esmeralda had the time of her life fixing their hair and faces. The sirens had left her with a good supply of cosmetics, so she was able to work wonders on the spellbound pirates. By the next morning, Frank and his fellow actors were shocked by the change in the pirate crew. Do you like the color of this eyeshadow I have for little Nell, Frank? Um, uh, yes, Esmeralda, it's very nice. Maybe I should have gone for a deeper blue. Let's so have the color of her eyes. I don't get this. Me neither. I was thinking about adding some lace to my eye patch, Esmeralda. What do you think? That might look a bit tacky, John. I suggest using a fine black silk. Sleek and sophisticated is a look we should go for, I think. Sleek and sophisticated? What I don't? Who's she kidding? Shut your traps, Swab, well, and get to work, or you'd be me and getting me whip. Yes, ma'am. Right, ma'am. Now, Elzebra, can you be showing me how this mascara thingy could be working? Of course, sir. So, um, how did Elzebra get to get in such demand all of a sudden? It was something that happened last night. I'm not quite sure what it was, but I woke up from some kind of trance. And all the pirates were pleading with Esmeralda to show them how to put on a proper foundation. It was quite strange. Be getting yourself ready, all you swabs and jack tars. Captain Frank be getting herself ready to unveil her new look. Wonderful. Did she decide to wear the cute outfit I found in the old trunk for her? That she did, I see. And they'd be looking right smart on her. Introducing Captain Frank the Pirate Queen.
Life ain't rich, me hearties. But I look at his fine clothes, he be getting a goodly ransom for the lover. Unwrap him. It be time to show his new home. Aye, aye, Captain. Mr. Smee? Mr. Smee, what are you doing here? You know this bill sucking dog, Young Swaps? He, he's Mr. Smee. Who's my agent? And the manager of our show. And a producer of a great renown. Well, that be a grand. I knew you'd be bringing us a fine fat ransom. I can bring you more than that, Captain. When I heard that you had kidnapped the cast of my entire show, it gave me an idea that could make millions. Of course, I'd be willing to share some with you if you'd cooperate and let Frank go too. I'll be needing him for this new venture. I'd be listening, mate. We had been doing a pirate show. It was successful, yes, but you saw it. It was all make-believe. It was eventually going to run its course. Nothing stays hot forever. Nothing except Except? Except the real thing. What you be meaning? I got this idea to develop a show where the audience and is an experience like on a pirate show. They are taken out to sea to live in a true pirate world for a week, month, whatever. That's why I was on that ship doing research. Research? You'd be a bit barmy, don't you think, Captain? It's crazy as a loon. No, Captain. This will work. I know it. We could even build suspense by having a boat where the loser has to walk the plank. People will be lining up to do this. I know it. And thinking about calling it, get this, a reality show. A reality show? Huh, that'd be a good one. Scrap, listen, listen to you, large mouth sky lad. Scrap your pirate show. I'd be taking a fork and collecting a fine fat ransom. And this week's squab over here, I'd be keeping a work on me ship. Yippee girl, little now. Hi, Captain. Trim the sails. I didn't want to catch this fine wind while it's still be blowing. Aye, aye, Captain. A reality show, whiny, that would never fly. A reality show, huh. That's a very cute outfit the captain has on. Has she ever done any acting? That'd be good. 
noble pirate Frank who fights for honor and justice. I believe we're all crazy to put our lives in Frank's hands. I must be all for that. What a fickle hand of fate life has dealt me with. Well, you could stay for the battle scene. No! Yeah. 
Because be just.
like the pirate show? Fearsome Pirate Frank. So everybody give your hands. You're a great audience. 